Hello and welcome to this video presentation on the general system structure and accounting framework for socioeconomic metabolism by Guillaume Ajobeté, Daniel Müller and me. Industrial ecology and related methods need to be integrated to assess central sustainability issues. If we take a proposed solution like urban energy systems, we want to come up with a comprehensive sustainability assessment regarding what technologies to deploy at what scale and how to redesign the system. We need to study system linkages like supply chain, material flows and so on. And we do this with the specific established assessment methods like life cycle assessment, input output analysis, material flow analysis to come up with a sustainability assessment for the proposed solution. Method integration is always guided by research questions and then we want to come up with a consistent framework to assess the sustainability solution. So we need to agree on research paradigm, the common terms to use, the computational structure, system boundaries and so on. And this work focuses on three aspects of method integration for industrial ecology, which is system boundaries, system structure and resulting database and accounting system. We phrase we frame this work in three research questions. The first one is we ask ourselves whether there's fundamental differences in the way the different methods MFA, LCA, IO model the industrial system and the answer will be yes, there is a subtle but important difference. We then ask ourselves whether there is some type of equivalence between the system graphs used in MFA and process LCA and the supply and use tables in input output analysis and also here the answer is yes, under certain conditions they are equivalent. Finally, we wanted to know whether there's a general system definition that integrates the perspective of different industrial ecology methods and beyond. The work that answers those questions was published in the Journal of Industrial Ecology about a year ago. We start with a general idea of how to model a process in industrial ecology and related fields. We would take a natural process or industrial process like this duck here and first understand how it works in physical terms. This would be the middle picture of this mechanical duck and then would convert this mechanical understanding into a black box model of the processes with flows coming in, stocks inside and flows leaving. The question here is how do the different models of industrial ecology assemble those processes to form a comprehensive system description? Our answer is there's two different ways of describing the system. The first one is almost trivial if you are a practitioner of industrial ecology. We take a system and the processes that are in are represented as nodes connected by flows of energy or substances. Each flow is made of a specific substance or a specific commodity and they are linked to each other. Important is that we can represent the graph of the system on the left side also as a table on the right side. For example, for commodity three, we would see that there is a flow of two units leaving node number T3 going to node number T1. So the most basic approach is just having a so-called directed graph where process nodes are linked by different flows and this process description, sorry, the system description can also be presented as a table. There is a more sophisticated version of the directed graph approach and this is called the direct, the bipartite directed graph. Here we have two groups of nodes. We have the transformation nodes as before, but now we also introduce the distribution nodes where substances or commodity of the same kind are distributed between industries and outside the system. And also for this node, we can derive an equivalent table structure. And this table structure is very familiar. It is called the supply and use table. The supply and use table we found is equivalent to the bipartite structure where flows only go from industries to markets and from markets to industries, but never between industries and never between markets. This was now quite abstract. And what we want to know is how the different modeling fields, MFA and so on, use the two types of system drawings in their system definitions. In MFA, we usually use only directed graphs, as you can see in the bottom picture, just different system, different processes linked within the system boundaries. 
In MFA, we do have a notion of markets between transformation processes, as you can see in the upper drawings, but there is no database structure that enforces a bipartite structure. For example, in the upper system drawing, you see that there is a flow from waste handling, waste handling to the refining sector, from an industry to another industry. This is a violation of the bipartite principle, even though markets are present in the system. So we learn that in MFA, the general system structure is not bipartite. Similar, a similar finding applies to process LCA, where we just combine processes to form the value chains of commodities or services. And also here, there is no alteration between markets and industries. So here also no system, no bipartite system structure prevails. The situation looks different in a per output analysis where we found that the supply and use table is equivalent to a bipartite graph and this can in turn be drawn as a system definition that you see here where we have industrial nodes represented by a single industry box and market nodes represented by this market box and these boxes, these processes are connected by the supply table going from the industries to the markets and the use table going from the markets to the industries. If you want to be physically complete, we need to add resources, emissions and waste flows. This would be the second graph, same structure as above, but more comprehensive, more industrial ecology like. When we convert the supply and use table into an input output model, we basically have to replace the supply table by a single vector, a single output vector that assigns one output for each industrial processes. This you see in the bottom drawing, this would be the underlying system definition of all input output models, including input output based LCA. We can also use the graphic system approach to understand the structure of more complicated input output models. For example, here the waste input output model. And what we found is that the balancing equation of the markets in those models is always the Leontief model equation. This holds for the simple input output model and it also holds for the waste input output model. More details on that in the paper. We continued to investigate the system structure beyond industrial ecology and we found that in integrated assessment models, Bipartite graphs have been used for decades. This is, this is an example of the Markel model, where the gray boxes represent conversion processes like energy conversion or energy use, and the vertical line represent distribution nodes that distribute the commodities like electricities to the different consumers. We can now summarize our findings for the first question whether there are fundamental differences in the system structure between MFA, IO and so on, we found the following answers. In MFA and process LCA, markets are neither required nor is there a database structure that enforces their presence. While in input output and integrated assessment models, markets are always present. The system and database structure of input output and integrated assessment models is a bipartite directed graph with industry nodes and market nodes for each commodity. Markets are always present in Leontief based input output models, including input output based LCA. And in fact, the Leontief model equation is the market balancing equation of the system. And we also saw that supply and use tables are equivalent representations of bipartite directed graphs. They can be converted into each other without loss of information. For question two, whether there is some type of equivalence between the system graphs in MFA and process LCA and the supply and use tables, we found the following answers. In general, there is no such equivalence. The system structure of MFA and process LCA is different in input output models and IEMs in general. And this means that an MFA model in general cannot be reformulated as a Leontief input output model. But we can introduce markets to MFA and process LCA system and we can reroute industry to industry flows via markets for the respective commodities. And by changing the system structure of MFA and process LCA, 
we can create a bipartite graph structure also for these models. And this means the corresponding supply and use tables would represent a universal database structure for the different tools of industrial ecology and beyond. Before we move on, I would like to stress the importance of explicit system definition using the example of input-output analysis. On the right side of this slide, you see the familiar input-output table with the row account, which is the market balance, and the column account, which is the industry balance. From that table, we can construct a graphical representation of the system that you see in the upper left corner, where we have the production nodes representing the industries and the distribution nodes representing the markets for the different commodities and the different flows within the system. And we also have value added and final demand. To make this graphical approach more familiar, more similar to the MFA approach, we would condense the production nodes into a single big box, same with the distribution nodes. And then between those nodes, we would not have a single flow flowing, but more an array of different flows or a vector of different flows. By using a graphical system description, we can make the market processes that are often not mentioned in Leontief input output modeling explicit. So we can actually show that they are always there. They are there both in the table at, and in the graphical system. And the Leontief modeling, the Leontief model equation is actually the market balance equation. Now for the third part, the third research question about the general bipartite graph, we looked into how both economics and industrial ecology and other sustainability sciences model transformation processes. In economics, we would take our example, like here the duck, and only record three different flows. The first one is the value added that is generated. The other one is the precursor products that the duck would consume. And the third one would be the products that come out of the duck. In industrial ecology, we are more comprehensive. We also need to account for the natural resources, for the waste and for the emissions to establish a physical system balance. Our question is now, can we take both the economic perspective and the physical perspective and integrate this into a very general bipartite graph description of socio-economic metabolism and industrial metabolism in particular. And the answer you can see on that slide. Here you see three medium gray boxes which represent the transformation processes. The different industries here all represented by a single box, the different waste treatment industries and the different use phases. Those transformation processes are connected to each other, not directly, but via the markets for products, for waste, for production factors like labor and capital, for emissions and for resources. What you see here is, so to say, the most general underlying system structure that is compatible to the different industrial ecology methods and also to integrated assessment model. The system structure is equivalent to a table representation that we will look at in a moment and also to the balancing equation of the processes. It is a general accounting scheme with industries, waste treatment, the use phase and the markets that can be quantified for many different regions and on any level of resolution. It is compatible to the system of national accounts, but it extends the system by including a full coverage of society's metabolism and the biophysical basis. We can convert the graphical representation in the two generalized supply and use tables that you see here. Every single arrow in the, in the diagram we just saw now is a table in the generalized supply and use table. It is exactly the same data. And by arranging those tables into the row and columns, we record the system structure in the table here. And this generalized supply and use table, this generalized accounting framework is based on the work of Yannick Schmidt and Stefano Macchiai, which 
who, who developed this system and we took it and linked it to the graphical representation more familiar from material flow analysis and to the representation of the system as balancing equations. All three, the system drawing, the tables and those equations are equivalent representations of socioeconomic metabolism. This brings us to the take-home messages from this talk. First, the presence of markets creates bipartite system graphs for the industrial network, and this is common in both input-output analysis and integrated assessment models. The graphical approach to system structure helps to clarify model relations intuitively, including the role of the markets that are often not made explicit in input-output models, and the distinction between useful process out out output and process throughput that would include waste and emissions in accounting frameworks. The lack of this distinction has repeatedly led to confusion in the literature and we provide a few examples in the paper. The equivalence of process balancing equations, general system structure and supply and use tables provides three different but equivalent access points to system modeling and database building for industrial ecology. The system and database structures of material flow analysis and process LCA can be adapted to fit the supply and use tables by introducing market nodes for all commodities. In the case, the bipartite graph and the corresponding supply and use tables would represent a universal database structure for the different tools for industrial ecology. You can find the paper and the supplementary material on the webpage of the Journal of Industrial Ecology and I also put a link for a preprint version of the manuscript in case you don't have access. Thank you for your attention.